Hi, and welcome to In the Studio. Uh, I am your host today, Diane Crumley, and um, I am a long-term uh, volunteer with Davis Media Access, which is the organization that produces the show. We are in the studios of DCTV, and uh, this show in the studio is produced uh, four times a month. Um, it is produced both to educate the community about events um, and organizations that, um, that are happening in our area, and it also uh, serves as a training ground for volunteers who are manning the cameras um, as I speak. Uh, Davis Media Access has been working in the community of Davis for 25 years, and it is the first community um, uh, media center to also operate a low power community radio station. This is KDRT 95.7 FM and we have been on the air for over eight years now and uh, uh, one of the reasons I was asked to host the show is that I'm a long-term volunteer with KDRT radio and our guest today E. Emmett Brady also is a programmer on our radio station. He uh, has a show uh, called the Insect News Network. It airs live uh, Wednesdays at 4 p.m. And he also has a new show called Expanding Science that airs uh, from 5 to 6 on Wednesday. And so I think we're going to start off with having um, welcoming Emmett. Thank you. And um, tell us a little bit about um, what is the format for Insect News Network and what inspired you to bring this to the radio? Sure, Diane. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for having me in the studio and, and thank you for hosting the show. It's a beautiful introduction, you know. It's, well, a, it's, a, it's a very wonderful place to be uh, here at Davis Media Access for a lot of reasons and, and not the least of which is these fantastic studios and the people who help make this place uh, run. It's, it's a very special opportunity here in Davis. And um, I began the radio show of the Insect News Network on Cater 95.7 FM uh, just a little over a year ago. And uh, I was delighted from the minute I showed up at the station, the, the, the team was professional and supportive. And they really opened the facilities to me. And I thought, OK, so I've got a little bit to say about the microcosm, <laughs> the world of six and eight-legged creatures. You have a lot to say yeah, about well, it. You know, so yes. I think a lot of people have a lot to say. And that's really the essence of the Insect News Network. Uh, it's, it's a show that takes the listener into the world of insects, beyond the creepy and the crawly, to the fun, the fascinating, the profound, and even the sublime. And really, uh, it's not just about the bugs. It's about us. So yes. this, the show is really about it as it is about insects, but most importantly, it's about the relationship, the ancient interconnectedness and the, the profoundly complicated relationship we have with uh, the amazing microcosm. Yeah. Well, I know that you use the term cultural entomology yes. on, on your show. Yes. And um, just as a little bit of background to you and um, our listeners, um, I was trained in anthropology. And so uh, what I uh, like about that discipline is that it's very integrative mm, very and sure. that we're looking at our species both um, from an animal perspective, from our biology, yeah. but then also from our cultural sure. perspective. And then also in terms of how do we map on to our environment mm. and make a living. Yeah. And fundamentally, that boils down oftentimes to plants. Sure, it and always, then always does. It does. <laughs> Not often, and, always. <laughs> and then I think that also then um, boils down to, to in sure. insects. So could you tell us a little bit about the developing the term cultural entomology? Yeah. And is that yours or is it a greater um, Yeah, I talk about audience. this on the show quite a bit. It's actually a field that's been around for over a quarter century. And, and, and really, it's the intersection between the sciences, the humanities, and the social studies. And, um, and of course, they all blend together, right? There's science and humanity, and there's social yes. studies and science. So uh, what, what I uh, found that when I, I've been probably, you know, I've been a cultural entomologist for over four decades. But I didn't know of the phrase uh, until the 2000s. Actually, the, the late 1900s, but really in the 2000s is when I discovered this uh, entire 
community around it. And mm -hmm. it was created by a man named Charles Hogue. He was the curator for the LA County Natural History Museum. Uh, right. Definitely an ambassador for the tribe, for the insect tribe. Uh, one of the great men of all time. And he coined the term at the, uh, the annual entomology uh, conference in Hamburg, Germany back in 1984. So it's over a quarter a quarter century okay. old. They even had a, a digest. They had their own publication. And it's a wonderful read, but it was very brief. And most importantly, this evolution of the Insect News Network is contemporary. So the mm -hmm. most important things that I like to study are what's going on right now with people who have an affinity, a curiosity, or an obsession with insects and spiders. And it is like a, a brush fire. There are so many people who are fascinated by them that aren't necessarily scientists. Right. It's the yes. other half of the story. Yes. It's, it's both halves of the brain thinking about the natural world. And when we tune into the microcosm, um, we can choose to think about it or feel about it. And this is the most ancient relationship we've had. Because uh, I'd like to say, since you're a, a fan of archaeology, I'd like to say, if we came from hunter-gatherers, if we are the transcendent primate, there was a moment when we decided to study plants. Yes. And it changed the course of, of our, our you know, genome. But more importantly, um, I like to say that theoretically, uh, if the men were the hunter-gatherers, they went out and chased you know, the saber-toothed mm -hmm. tigers. Mm -hmm. uh, the women stayed home and they collected the berries, they raised the young, they harvested the nuts, they studied the plants. And when you study plants, you study insects. Yes. So that's as far back as it goes. The yes. earliest days, and yeah. so actually, interestingly, you're, you're saying that perhaps Females were the first entomologists. I'm not, I'm not perhaps saying that I am saying. saying it. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yes. And, yeah, and there's evidence, but probably my favorite example of archaeology, and I talk about this on the Insect News Network extensively, because we look at the world of the microcosm, all the little critters, but especially the six and eight legged ones. We look at it on three platforms, the practical, the compelling, and the sublime. And there's a lot of practical stuff about bugs that most people just are completely blissfully ignorant of. And yeah. if they knew about it, it would just enhance every aspect of their lives. You know? Yes. Um, but when you get to the, the compelling and the sublime, the oldest cave painting in the world features a person, one of the oldest, mm -hmm. about 10,000 years old, mm -hmm. in uh, La Cueva de Araña. The cave of spiders in Valencia, Spain, it shows somebody climbing a vine and harvesting honey. And the funny part about it is, and this mm -hmm. is where the whole thing comes back to the, the anthropology, is they call it bicor man. They call it what? Bicor man, which is nice, but mm -hmm. they should call it bicor person because it's it could be a man or it's right. very it's very right. nice. And the chances are, most likely, it was probably the women that would harvest the honey because they have they have the relationship with bees that is well established. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so, and they're, I guess, and they are also following animals yeah. who also, uh, you know, were, were hunty hunters. Yes. For example, such as bears and, yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah, too. That's, that's a great observation. Mm -hmm. But most fundamentally, the big transition happened when they went from pillaging the bees to work, living and coexisting and, and, and developing the rapport with the bees. And I, mm -hmm. I promise you that was women. <laughs> Back yes. in the day, right. you know, much like it is today, and that's a big chunk of the beeathon as well. You know, well, yes, and I guess that that's it um, is a time to to ask you about that. That you are, uh, from my understanding, um, organizing and hosting an event that'll be here at um, Davis Media Access in, the hive. Yep, in, in, right here. in, in this hive. Uh, it'll be uh, Wednesday, August twenty first. Yes. And the a-thon part, it's going to be 12 hours, yes, essentially. Yes, that's what so it is. So from noon yeah, yeah. to midnight. Absolutely. OK. Um, so uh, and, and it's 3.0. So it's this third, yes, third time. But the is. first time you've done it here, uh, right? Yeah, the first time I've done it in Davis, yeah. It's, it's the third year annually for the be a -thon. Uh, and, and the beautiful sign, I just want to say thanks to Rachel Elder. She's the beautiful uh, woman who designed the, this year's uh, poster. And also, yes. uh, Mayor Infinity uh, designed the template. And they both come together because I started the Beathon three years ago with a beautiful family, a community of people who had an online website called yourgardenshow.com, the first social media website for gardeners. And uh, they brought me on as part of the team. It was a wonderful husband and wife combination. And um, I was helping them do business development, right? And so when I came in, they had this whole section of their website dedicated to citizen science. And whether it's your garden show or any other website, if you tune into citizen science, it is one of the keys to sustainability 3.0. It well, is, and I'm it is definitely, yeah. Stop you there and just have you define citizen science sure, for, sure, for those uh, who haven't. Sure, heard sure. And there's of a lot that. of websites. Go listen to what David Attenborough has to say about citizen science. If you're going to get it from someone who is, is the, the, the great ambassador to the natural world, yes. you get it from Sir Attenborough. And he, um, 
uh, he basically, citizen science is that um, it's a very 21st century idea, very 21st century technology where scientists can use crowdsourcing from the general public um, to gather very important scientific data. And in particular, what I like to focus on are ones that advocate for the microcosm. So honeybee pollination protection, butterfly protection, you know, right down the line. This is some of the most popular citizen science in the world. The Audubon Society has been doing, you know, bird counts. Yes, the Christmas bird, yeah, bird counts. Absolutely. Yes. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful 20th century uh, pastime. And I like to say the insect tribe will step into the citizen science with the, with the insects in the same way. And it's already happening. This is National Moth Week, by the way, everybody. Yes. Okay, yes, nationalmothweek.org. Set up a blanket in your backyard, put a big light underneath it, see the beautiful moths that show up at night, and it's a great activity for anybody. And you can submit the results to, uh, the, the, on the website in, in Citizen Science. So, so the first be a -thon, um, it happened in 2011. Uh, we did it in three locations. It was mostly a web streaming interview format. I had about 30 guests on from around the world. And uh, they went four continents, uh, seven different countries. We had people, thousands of people tuning in. And it was to support a citizen science project that was happening out of um, the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a fantastic day. It was a 12-hour marathon. And we, we, I was based in San Francisco. Our uh, production crew, our production manager, was in Boston. And the, um, the direction team, the management team, and the graphics team was in Italy. So it was this really wow. international thing. Wow. Yeah, yes, cool. very integrative. Again. Yeah, and so um, uh, we did another one last year to a smaller scale, uh, but it was still just as fun, and it was mostly domestic. And then this year, uh, with the help and conversation with the, uh, Jeff and Autumn and these guys, uh, Alex and Diane here at, at Davis Media Access, we have decided to bring it in studio. So there's going to be a whole day right here in Davis. And, but you can watch it online, too. We're, we're, we're understanding we can port it through the, uh, through the the website for the Insect News Network. So. Okay, so then there again, you can you can have it. Um, you can potentially have folks yeah. all over the globe. Well, I, what I, one thing I wanted to ask you about, since this is a local program, though, that I know from um, just my my involvement um, in my sort of my day job, mm -hmm. that um, that Yolo County and and UC Davis mm -hmm. are one of the hot spots for studying the importance of pollinators. Sure. And to really bringing forth um, the the idea, both to the scientific community, but then also to um, the the general community, sure, sure. that um, in terms of our food supply, yeah. that pollinators are incredibly important, yeah. and that supporting you know, not only the honeybee but then um, the native cousins yeah. um, is is something that uh, uh, they're they're working on. And that also each of us could potentially do by what we plant yeah. in our own yard. And that's the essence of the Beathon. So the Beathon is not just about honeybees. It's about, I'd say pollination is brought to you by the letter B, right? There's the <laughs> honeybee, the bumblebee, the beetle, the butterfly, the bat, the hummingbird, right? Mm -hmm. So um, all the creatures that uh, interact with flowers, and, and some of them are ugly and, and, and unremarkable and mistakable. They're all part of the symphony of evolution. It's all interconnected. And so the Beathon, we're going to look at mostly honeybees, but a great deal of the native bees, because there's 20,000 species of bees, and only uh, seven subgenera are, are um, actually honeybees. Um, and then we're also going to talk about bats. I shot this fantastic video down by the Yolo County Freeway. Yes, the, the bypass. Causeway. Yeah, I yes. caught the bats, the beautiful Mexican free tail bats coming out. Oh, it's so At sunset. fun. sunset. And then last night, uh, of course, UC Davis is an epicenter for not only one of the great agriculture schools, but it's probably the finest honeybee program in the world. And mm -hmm. um, last night I went and saw The Wings of Life with Louis Schwartzberg, and it was, it was created by Amina Harris and the Honey and Pollination Center over at uh, RMI. At Robert Mondavi Institute, and you know, I like to tell people that the digital era, and I can't say this enough. I say this almost every broadcast and with mm -hmm. every talk I do. The digital era, the 21st century, we get to understand the microcosm, the little yes. creatures of the world, in a way that no human civilization has ever even imagined. They, they did think about it. They, they yeah. dreamed about it, and they fantasized, and they worried, and they. But now we get with our digital technology, we get to. Slow it down and blow it up. Take the pictures, examine oh, yes, it, and yes. then we get to shoot it around the world on the internet. I mean, it's the 21st century cultural entomology. Boom! Perfect timing. 
Well, then, uh, also then, the use of uh, like your mobile mobile devices and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm working on that. That's a big one. That's a hard one to keep up in that one. Okay. <laughs> the metaphor uh, of mobile communication depollination is is the great unresolved metaphor, right, in, in our world because our idea of smart technology is supposed to be the benefit we get from it is greater than the management of it. That's smart technology. Mm -hmm. And with uh, communicating through cellular devices, and it's not exactly as efficient as pollination yet, but it's pretty great, you know. It's well, not as sensual as pollination. Right. <laughs> well. Know? I, I guess I know that um, like uh, there are many apps, for example, um, oh, uh, being able to identify uh, wildflowers or, or you know, like like you're out in the field and it's like, what is it that I'm, you know, what am I seeing? Yeah. So you could potentially take a photograph well, that's, that's, of is, a pollinator yeah. and, and then be. The beathon is the beathon okay. is not just a long conversation about the life cycle of the honeybee. There are so many great bug experts. There's Dr. Bugs, there's the bug guy, there's the bug gal. And those people are wonderful and they tell the story of the naturalism and the art and the passion of the bugs the way they do. I like to say I am an ambassador for the insect tribe. Mm -hmm. And the insect tribe is not just understanding the insects, but it's also understanding how they fit in to the puzzle of the human, the human species. You know, how do they fit into our culture? I like to think that cultural entomology is going to redefine our culture in a dramatic way because the bees couldn't talk any louder, right? You know, yes. like there's still yes. scientists who are arguing about what's causing the bees demise. Who cares, right? Yeah. Clean it all up and all of a sudden our, our bees are going to be healthy again. You know, yes. it's not rocket science. This all yes. started happening in the last hundred years. And so the people in the insect tribe, they're brilliant people. They come from all walks of life. They have different careers. They have different motives. They have different spiritual beliefs. But the people in the insect tribe understand that this interconnectedness, mm -hmm. right? We are here with the insects. And we have always been here with the insects. The same honeybee that you see tomorrow in your garden is the same honeybee that Charles Darwin saw or that Imhotep saw back in Egypt or Aristotle, any of them. Yes. You know, it's the same creatures. Our understanding of them is so far behind. You know, it's like if you sat in your house with your dog every day, and at the end of 10,000 years, you couldn't communicate more with your dog, wouldn't that be a little unusual? <laughs> yes, yes. But there's a lot more insects in the world than there are, there are dogs, you know? So um, back to the be the one thing I do want to point out, too, is the schedule is, is coming together really quickly. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a luncheon, a very special invite-only luncheon, a honey luncheon, over at Monticello Restaurant here in Davis yes. from 12 to 1. Okay. Be a little break. I'll come back to the studio. 12 to 4, we'll be in the studio broadcast on television. Guest lineup will come out in probably about a week from now. Okay. Maybe two. Um, and then we're going to do two hours of radio. So I have the Insect News Network and Expanding Science will all be for the Beathon. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe go down to the farmer's market and pollinate a little bit like that. Oh, and that then would be fantastic. The real art science fusion. Okay. happens when we come back to the studio and we're going to do a party in the back lot with the, the, the sharpest, most entertaining, most performance oriented people, responsible, community minded, love the bugs and it's going to be a pollinator party and I'm going to start doing these all across the country so uh, people can come dressed as uh, their favorite insect or their favorite flower. No problem. Well, spiders are. I, I think that <laughs> this brings up a, another um, point to how um, um, art and, and sort of appreciating sure. insects and Absolutely. the back and forth. And I just know that I've recently uh, seen, you know, these, these beautiful photographs of, of butterflies who, you know, are endangered and yeah. we're, we're trying to help them and, oh, and dragonflies and all of these things. And I look at them and they are like jewels Absolutely. of art. Absolutely. It's, it's incredible, just this sort of natural yeah. design. Yeah, and you but can I, see it with the naked eye. you can appreciate eye. that. And so I could see yeah. that they would be very much sort of an inspiration yeah. for art. The earliest in. inspiration. I mean, as far back as it goes, people have adorned themselves with insects or tried mm -hmm. to imitate the look of insects from the beginning, from way before recorded history. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at all the, the, the ancient motifs, they all have beautiful adornment. And that's what I do is I research, I try and put context to all this beautiful information and I put it into a context that matches with the sciences. And, and what we don't need more, to be honest, in, in my opinion, is more people talking about the, um, the problem with bees mm -hmm. or the problem with pollinators. We need more people saying, okay, what can we fix right here? And yes. it starts with where the conversation and our conversation began. It starts with plants. 
If yes. we restore the plants, everything is going to be just okay because they're the lungs, they're the heart, they're the soul of the planet. Uh, and mushrooms too, by the way. And that's for you, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> Louis Schwartzberg's got a movie. If you don't know his work, if you want to see the world we don't see mm -hmm. in the finest time-lapse photography, you have to see Wings of Life. You can watch it on, on Netflix right now. He was on my show yesterday. I hosted Louis in the yes, studio. Yes, I, I heard it was part a, of it that. It was such a, he oh. was my first, my first in salon this year that I've done, so, you know. Um, and so that, that film, and say it again, it's, it's Wings, Wings of, of Life. Life. Yeah. Okay, so it was, is it, um, so it's not available at theaters, right? Well, no, is he, it he's traveling? running it in theaters, but, but, but we'll talk more about that on another show. But you okay. can go to Netflix to see it. But okay. we saw it here at UC Davis last night, um, and he's doing another one on mushrooms really soon. So, you know, that's coming out. The, well, the one thing how, I want to say before, I'm yeah. sorry, you had a question? Uh, I was just going to say, how would folks get involved with this be -a That's a great thing. So right now we're doing a call to artists and scientists. Um, I'm looking for people of all different uh, walks of life that have some sort of skill or talent. I have a little de uh, decision making committee that I'm going to talk to about who's going to be on the be -a especially in the studio. And um, especially for the after party, we want people to bring out their performance art. You can come makeup, clothing, costume. It has to be refined though. It can't be the typical bumblebee costume that, yes. and that's one thing folks, bumblebees are black and yellow. Honeybees are orange and sort of brownish black. If you're going to dress up on a honeybee and talk about saving the bees, the bumblebees are in trouble, but make sure you get the difference, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Everybody shows up dressed like a bumblebee. You know, that's, yes. that's just a cute little yeah. side Yeah, so that's note. just a stereotypic yeah. thing, yes. It is, yeah. yeah. And so we're going to turn the back lot into a micro ecosystem. And I need support right now in the Davis land in Sacramento Valley with people who can bring things to the party and make, help make the ecosystem. You know, because okay. the, the back lot is totally fresh. We're looking for some tattoo artists. We're looking for some graffiti artists. We're looking for interior decorators, people who produce sound stages, the whole thing. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the, the ultimate pollinator party to date, I promise. So will, will you be, uh, will there be serving, um, will there be honey tasting? There will or? be. There'll be a lot of stuff, too. And there'll yeah. be music provided by Eminent B, oh. a DJ and MC, Eminent B. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's what I, so I, I'm going to send out the information and a lot of emails, a lot of Facebook posts. Everybody's um, going to have to go through a process though, because the, the lot's kind of small. So we're going to, we're going to try mm -hmm. and keep it uh, really the people who really get the microcosm, really in feeling the event rather than mm -hmm. just the people looking for a casual party, right? You got to bring the game because we're going to be recording in the green screen too. We're going to be recording people, you know, in the studio, dancing oh. in their costumes and stuff. It's going to be, it's going to be okay. crazy. Okay. Now, so then, Might have a roof will, so Jeff. this will be, and so Alice. people can also be streaming this. They, if they can, can, yeah. Attend. We're going to try and stream the whole thing online through the insectnewsnetwork.com. And, and okay. if nothing else, you'll be able to see the after footage because we try and get it all done one in a day. I'm not going to try and get people to send me their counts and their bees. What I want you to do is send me your stories. This is the citizen science of the bee a thon. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you think, how you feel, how you relate, what your background is. If you want to count bees and you want to count butterflies and you want to mm -hmm. count moths, please do it and share it with the websites that are dedicated to that. Yes. The Insect News Network is how you think and how you feel because that is what turns every ship around. So okay. When people start expressing their love for the microcosm, it'll be undeniable. Well, then this will also lead to um, another project that you have in the works, yes. which is a book that's coming out, right? Called The yes. Insect Tribe. The Insect Who, Tribe. What, why? Who, what, why? Yeah, that is and that is the uh, the book that I have been. Um, it has been germinating for years. Mm -hmm. It's coming to fruition, and it's a beautiful fruit, you know. Um, and then, well, of course, the bugs and are there and too. and this <laughs> and this would definitely be sort of is it sort of a companion to. Insect News Network. It's a different sense. thing. Yeah, it's a different. Well, yeah, of mm -hmm. course it is. The Insect News Network is very much about uh, getting people tapped in, okay. uh, and then the Insect, uh, the uh, Association for Cultural Entomologists, uh, is going to be the professional educational asset uh, mm -hmm. in this community, and then the Insect Tribe is where the art and science fusion meet. So I dive into all the ways. It's a, it's a long book. It's got lots of great references, lots of information, but context, context, context. The great thinkers, the great artists, the great leaders who are inspired by the microcosm. When you see this, and I'm going to be giving out previews during the be and probably for people who tune in and sign up on my web, my newsletter, you'll get snippets and previews. And, 
special okay. invitations. There's All things right. coming down the pipe. That well, I'm just why don't you t yeah. tell people then how um, how they do contact sure. you and like yeah. for example the address. Of yeah, your sure. Website. Yeah, Davis Media Access is here in, in town, 1623 Fifth Street. And please come and see the studios, whether you're involved with the Beathon or not. This place should be on a grand map. It's a fantastic organization. And uh, at least Cater, the radio station, is so wicked. There's some, so much great programming. You know, tune in to 95.7. Uh, but also, um, they can go and send info at uh, insectnewsnetwork.com. And it, it might even become bat at Insect News Network, so people can specifically communicate with me about the Beathon, Beathon. being involved, or just checking in. That's great. OK. All right. Well, that, that is fantastic. Now, tell me, how, how long have you been working on, on this book? Uh, <laughs> The book itself, yeah. actually under this title, it's gone yeah. through a couple of iterations. Okay. And I have a, a really terrific book agent that I'm talking to who's, who's been with me through this. So the first title was called Humvees and Honeybees. <laughs> and uh, it's, all the content in that book also fit in. And I also wrote uh, the Wikipedia entry for cultural entomology. So, so that was a big chunk of it. But then the insect tribe is my journey. So there's a lot of really, really special stuff. And uh, I'd like to think it's stuff that uh, whether people understand if it's art or science is not the issue, as long as they yeah. get ignited by it. You know? Yes. Yeah. Now, to what extent are you in any way reaching out to kids? That's a um, great question. And I love them. And I love them. And, and the world of insects is big enough for everybody. And kids, of course, are always tuned in. I like to work with, with I like to talk to young adults and up. I like mm -hmm. to talk about mature themes and, mm -hmm. and different pr perspectives that I would share with kids um, on a very different scale. I do a talk for kids called um, Baby Bugs and How to Talk to Them, right? And it's a great one. We talk, I teach them about eggs and caterpillars and pupa, and they really, mm -hmm. get, really, really love it. Uh, I also teach another one about the five senses and how insects have fun, you know. But it's adult. The okay. insect tribe is mm -hmm. definitely adult things. And so is the Insect News Network. But you yes. can listen to it with your kids. You just have to be ready for a lot of conversation and explanation. That's all. all right. <laughs> OK. Well, I tell you, um, this half hour or 28 minutes has just blown by. Mm -hmm. You know. It's been delightful. Thank and, you. And um, I really thank you. And I wish you so much luck. I, I think that um, for folks who have not um, heard the Insect News Network, uh, if you're in the Davis area, 95.7, um, Wednesday afternoons at 4. And Fridays or, noon to 1. Yeah, you can hear the replay on Fridays. OK, yeah. and that's kdirt.org. And you can stream that um, everywhere. And then um, I'd like to um, uh, thank uh, the, the crew here for in the studio. Um, our director, Diane Dadashka, who, um, who heads this tribe. She up. sure does. And um, if you are, would like to uh, view this episode online or other ones, you can go to dctv.davismedia.org and catch up on a whole sort of uh, other episodes of In the Studio. So I thank you on behalf of Davis Media Access for tuning in. Spread the buzz.